More twists with the thousands of fake unemployment claims that have hit Illinois and the country. The owner of a well-known bridal shop has been mailed stacks of unemployment letters. Yeah, all use her address with different names. And WGN's investigative reporter Lourdes Duarte follows a 500-mile-long trail piecing together how the letters ended up on the Northwest Side store. At first, the wedding shop owner thought the unemployment letters with details about eligibility were a simple mistake that a call to the state would fix. But those letters have kept coming. Even in the last week, they've received some. We followed up on one of those claims. It led us to another small business and a woman in another state that had nothing to do with the scam. All of this shows you the complicated web created by fraudsters to get their hands on cash. At I Do Bridal and Dunning, every dress has a story. So what year did we say this girl was? 1951. For the last month, the vintage wedding dresses have been just a backdrop as the owner tries to stitch together an explanation into the stack of unemployment eligibility letters she's received from the state. Some of these came a few weeks ago, and then they followed with a stack, and then a few days ago, we got another stack. Kelly Majeski Hamilton is a little shy about being on camera, but she's owned the business for nearly 30 years, helping eco-conscious brides save cash. The last year, though, has been one of the toughest. Her husband died battling COVID-19. And then my mother immediately became ill the very next day. Her mother survived, but in the middle of all that, the bridal industry took a dive. When Kelly filed for assistance, she was denied. So imagine her frustration when unemployment letters in different names just kept coming. So right here you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten letters from IDS to your address. Correct. Are any of them in your name? Do you know any of these people? Uh, no, just this one was in my mother's name. This one is in my mother's name and she hasn't worked in 40 years. Kelly called WGN hoping to figure out why all these eligibility claims continued to show up at her address. Keep in mind the claims don't list I do bridal as the employer who laid off the worker, but simply use the mailing address. My uh, business address, my home address, uh, Tracy, Gail, Felka, Martha, Jill, we started making calls. I'm hoping you can give me a call back. It looks like someone tried to file for unemployment using your name. And knocking on doors. Do you remember, first of all, this lady ever working here? No, oh, remember. We tracked down one of the names. Now, since the person may be a victim of identity theft, we're not going to reveal her name. But according to these letters, she was seeking unemployment benefits after supposedly being let go from a job at the Secret Garden. There are several of those flower shops in Illinois. In Chicago, one downtown, one on the southwest side. Both employ a small number of people, but neither recognize the name or the picture. So everybody who works here is family. Family only, yes. And is not. It's not part of our family, no. Never heard of her, no. never seen her. No. Turns out that's because the person named on that unemployment claim lives not in Illinois, but 500 miles away in a suburb of Kansas. And get this, she's still employed as a teacher's aide at an elementary school there. The states are so overwhelmed, they haven't figured out a way to keep that from happening. Financial expert Terry Savage has been tracking trends in fake unemployment claims since the start of the pandemic. She says hackers are constantly changing up ways to trick the system. There's no rhyme or reason on which small businesses or addresses they target. That part of it seems to be random. Now the scammers have decided to send letters out of state, use out of state addresses. They may take 25 different names and put the same address, which is why people are suddenly getting a pile of letters addressed to unknown people at their house because the COVID scamsters have decided to make it a little harder for state unemployment agencies to find out exactly where the fraud is. In this case, remember they listed the secret garden as the employer? Well, we finally figured out which one. We've gone to every secret garden in Chicago. And lastly, I thought there's one in Decatur. Let me try to call them. It was us, yes, good reporting. 
That's right, the Secret Garden in Decatur, Illinois, more than 350 miles from the Kansas Teacher's Aid and 200 miles from the wedding shop. Two small businesses having to deal with what's become an unemployment nightmare. It says on here that the last day she worked was March 24th of 2020. No, we, we weren't even open at that point. As a matter of fact, I have four of them here that I have never, ever had employed with me. The small shop in Decatur and Kelly's wedding store caught in the middle of a complicated scheme that's happening more and more. So especially for a small business to have to file all these things all the time and, and to constantly fight the fraud. And seems to have no end in sight. The IDES fraud division looked into our case. They confirmed for us that it is in fact fake. It has now been shut down. The agency says this is just the latest scheme using information from different states and cities to slow down the system. Analysts and experts say that fraudsters are using a random address in many cases and then rerouting bank information to get some of those unemployment deposits. As far as what to do if you receive stacks of unemployment letters using different names to your address, Address, report it, then destroy those letters. I have also posted some links on WGNTV.com for help with identity theft. I'm Lourdes Duarte, WGN Investigates.